There are good mornings. Those with warm tea and the purple light. Then, there are mornings without tea. Or any light at all. Where you wake up and find your fortune lost. Taken from you. Possibly forever. I used to be Leopold the Golden, Leopold the Fortunate. They called me the grand inventor of greatest engineering. But when my fortune was stolen, I was only the fool. And there was trickiness involved, for the thief had dropped my gold like breadcrumbs through the woods. I left in haste with a note to my wife. Matilda, dearest, I have gone to catch a culprit. I hope to be back by evening supper. Yours kindly, L. Before I went deeper, I paused to imagine the thief. Cousin Victor was a suspect. His moral compass twitched like broken clockworks when gold was near. But Aunt Olga had passion. Her pursuits for pure metal were fierce, with no compassion. And Uncle Sergei was the ruthless one, our wolf of the lands. But we used to laugh together. Now we had not spoken in years. It was their loss. But despite this pickle of a trap, I followed the gold underground. I was choiceless, at least momentarily. Look at this. I approached Cousin Victor's port. He used to be a treasure hunter, splitting the oceans for fortune lost. But a violent storm tore his ship apart. We assumed he was torn as well. But he came back, barely living. He was himself a wreck after this, quiet at home with his wife and children. He declined my offer to build him a new ship. I told him he should not fear to sail the oceans again. He told me I should go away and not come back. Now perhaps his sight was set on the greatest treasure he never found. My gold. Okay. I had seen the steaming apparatus as I passed through Victor's den. He was shifting like a slumber shadow. He used to keep the lands in order. That was the part he played in our world. But now he seemed out of order. This explained why things were getting wildish with traps and torrents growing out of every corner. But the apparatus was of no concern to me. I was looking for Cousin Victor. Or so I thought. The trail continued into Aunt Olga's lands. With Victor absent like a puzzle piece, perhaps she was the thief. Aunt Olga had searched the dunes for metal, bending it to construct great and mighty cities. But a dry wind arrived, weary with rage, it yelled at her walls. Once it went quiet, only ruins remained. Aunt Olga bothered no more about constructions after that. I offered to help her restore her designs. I said she would be empty if she didn't. She said I was one to talk. I should take my gold and go. It made sense. She did not want only the gold I offered. She wanted it all. The 
The apparatus had followed me to Aunt Olga's cities. He was watching me. Who was he to judge? He was devouring metal like any of us. He required it, like we needed blood to our hearts. It would not be my fault if the apparatus' heart stopped. The lands were drained from metal, but it was not my doing. But without him, the world would be blunt and cold. Order would unbalance. left Aunt Olga's cities confused by her act of vanish. The trail continued into Uncle Sergei's mountains. He was a trader, draining the metal from the mountain, selling it to whoever and whatever. Sergei drilled deep and hit the core of the world. A storm came down and collapsed his mines. His crew died, his wealth was gone, buried under the rocks. Uncle Sergei went mad. He settled by a lake, where he spent his days writing, swimming, and sleeping. I offered to help him restore his trade. I said he would remain insane if he didn't. He said I was the mad one, and told me to disappear and take my gold with me. Of course, he'd been scheming to steal my fortune instead of drilling for new. Ruthless, like the wind through Uncle Sergei's passage. Aha! Obviously, all three of them. How could I not have seen this? I screamed and yelled. Why had they taken my gold? I had been nothing but kind to them. They told me to be calm. Eventually, I had no strength for anything else. We did not take your gold, they said. We never wanted it. Not when you offered it, not now. But we helped, they said. We spread pieces of your gold over our lands. But we were not alone. The part of my gold trailed into the snow. Think like the engineer you once were, they said. That is how you made your fortune after all. As I continued to the cold, I felt like the idiot on a fool's errand, ignorant of everything, the last one in the world to know. This is not good. I was afraid. The apparatus kept following me. I thought of deceit and fortune lost, of envy and revenge. But most of all, I thought of one thing. Or one person. Hello, Leopold. Matilda? How have you been? I left you a note. Someone took my gold. I've missed you. I haven't been gone long. It's been years, Leo, since I left. That is long. Did you leave? I didn't notice. I've been busy with all the... Do you know why I took your gold, Leo? It was you? Do you know why I left? But you didn't leave. I wanted to stay. I tried. But the gold took your decency, your kindness. I was always kind. You were simple and passionate when we met, and I was happy with that. Uh, you would have tired of me. You would have wanted things, not inventions. We'll never know that, will we? Your gold is at the end of this trail. Very well. I'm leaving. Did you know that the apparatus needs pure metal for its heart to function? Or it will shut down forever? I do not care about hearts anymore. I had
had reached the end. I had my gold, which Matilda stole from me. But what had I recovered? The apparatus had no metal left. It would shut down and not wake up. Perhaps I could offer him some gold. No one else seemed to want it. This time, I would not accept a negative answer. At this point, I thought it was over. I was ready to go home alone. But I was wrong. The apparatus's veins were closed. His heart had stopped. The valves did not move. I had only a few minutes to resolve this, or the apparatus would die. There went my gold, into the belly of a steaming machine. I felt strange, empty, but not tired. Well, that was that, I suppose. Leopold, are you hurt? Of course. I'm bruised beyond myself, hardly able to jump, much less leap or float. <laughs> I don't know what that means. You always had your funny words. Well, I had better get going. It's a long way home. If you don't mind, Leo dearest, I will walk with you. I did lose my goal that day. All of it. To some strange world machine. Quite an engineering marvel. But in the end, I achieved what I set out to do. I recovered my fortune.